Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. We're back at Tommy's Auto Machine and Parts here in Springfield, Tennessee. We are finishing up just the last little bit on the 440 heads, the iron 440 906 heads that we're getting ready for Marsha, our 70 Plymouth Fury convertible. We're hoping to get the car ready in time for power tour. We're just doing some last little bits before we can get those heads home and put the valves on and get them all buttoned up and ready to go and on the engine. And we hope to get the whole top end done in this video. So hang tight and we'll walk you through what we're up to right now. Hey guys, real quick, we got a whole mess of new Mopar Connection Magazine t-shirts for sale. They're up here at the Mopar Connection store. We're gonna put the link up in the corner and we have some really cool designs. The first one is my favorite and this is called the Order of the Big Block. And as you can see, you're getting the full rotation of the big block firing order right here on your back. And in case you forget, you can have your buddy turn around and you can set your firing order the right way and not mess up. Second, we've got the what does Mopar mean to you? And it's a whole script of different definitions that have been some of the most popular ones that we've seen over the years. It's not all of them, but it's a snapshot of some of the best ones. So show your loyalty to Mopar by wearing it loud and proud. Grab yours at the store today. We'll put the link up in the corner. All right, we're back at Tommy's Auto and Machine. And Tom has been working on our 906 heads for Marsha's 440. And the problem with the 906 head is that it had, or it did not come with hardened seats. And you went ahead and put in hardened seats. In the exhaust side for it, the just, unleaded fuel. Okay. And uh, we had to replace the exhaust guides. They were worn. The intake side, we were good. They were still within tolerance, uh, but now we've, Fix the heads for the unleaded fuel, uh, new bronze guides, new hardened seats, and we're fixing to show about cutting for positive type seal. Okay. So for you guys who are not familiar, what we've got, since we are running a hydraulic roller cam, we are running their double springs, the comp double spring, and if I was running a single spring, the floating valve seat, or excuse seal. me, the, the voting, floating valve seal would have gone on just fine. But because we're running a double spring, we're running out of room. Correct. So we're going to machine these down to take a, what is known as a positive seal with a bike on, and it will... Once it's machined, it will press on, it won't float, it will be permanent, not permanently attached, but it'll be tight to where it will stay on there and becomes a positive seal. Okay. It goes inside of a, it's a smaller OD, which will go inside the inner springs. Perfect. All right, well, I think Cole's getting us set up on the machine, and then we're gonna show the process. Absolutely. Great, thank you. How much do you take off? Oh, not much. I'm gonna say rough guess, fifty thousand or so. Okay. It doesn't really trim this any. It just cuts down on the outside. Yeah, it just gives it a little bit of a shelf so that you can mm -hmm. you can press on the seal. Mm -hmm. And when it gets, it has a chamfer up inside. So when it comes down and starts chamfering, that you know you've cut it off. Nice. Well, before we get started on the heads, I figured we might as well get the harmonic balancer on. So we've got this, this is an old beat up trick flow balancer that I've had for a few years. And this will help out. I think it's a little overkill, but it's a really nice harmonic damper. And uh, we're just gonna put a little bit of oil on just to get, whoop, just a little bit of assembly lube. Because I don't like doing it dry. I think it's a quick way to 
gall up some metal. All right, line up our keyways. There we go. Beautiful. Let's get our installation tool on. Went over to Harbor Freight to go get an installation tool. The one I got is way too small. It's for just pulleys, not for a big harmonic damper. Okay, bottomed out. That looks good. Threads are nice and clean. So I had to pick this guy up for rent over at Advance. You know how it goes, we've all done it. Okay, we've got our balancer ready to go. Our tools installed, got a big crescent wrench and uh, our 916s to hold this. We're just gonna start cranking on this. Get this damper on. Ugh. There we go. There it is. <laughs> it had to run that. 135. Know, balancer wasn't in all the way. Yeah. The balancer was flush. I just. Right. But I don't it, was, it had to move. The just, nut. I think the nut just needed a little bit more. Huh? All right. Damper's on. Bolts on, torque down to 135. We're gonna put the pulley on and then we're gonna focus on the heads next. Yeah. Once they start, it's all happy. Actually, I went that way. That made it easier. Oops, that one is really Steel ones are hard all the way in. These get soft, they, they yeah. make it a little. Jim's got a He-Man, the damn thing. Oh, it just went all at once. Yeah. Just rip. I'm gonna make it just pull itself back up. I think it's okay. Shop dog, get out of here, you goof. Look out, girl. Get out of here. I'm gonna get kicked in We're the head. We're not playing frisbee right now. Yeah. Right. Well. Yep. Jeez. I know you don't ever get attention, do you? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> You're so. <laughs> yeah. Valve springs, we got our Proform compressor tool. This actually worked out really well. We already got one head done and uh, pretty much got the pattern set up. Uh, again, we're running with an open chamber 906 iron head. Um, I, we're running 10 and a half to one compression. You're not gonna have the big heat. That's the rubber will harden over time. That's why the, these don't. They don't change with heat. If right. You're running a, like in a boosted engine or anything, you're making big power, you're going to have a lot of combustion chamber. Agreed. Energy. See how easy that slipped on? Oh, that yeah. went on so stinking nice. Yeah, that's right. We've got our seals on. They pressed on real nicely, just needed a little bit of oomph. That's okay. Uh, these were cut down so that we could fit these seals. The big rubber boots that, you know, uh, because we had to positive cut these so that we could press on these nice uh, new seals on. Uh, Instead of the umbrella seal? The umbrella seal just kind of, you know, corked on there and they wouldn't have fit inside of our springs. So what we're going to do next is we are going to go over our keepers and get our pairs lined up. You'll notice that the valves are cut. There's four grooves and then two grooves and they make them specifically to match. This is a two groove keeper. This is a four groove keeper. Never the two shall twain. They will never mix. So be careful that you're not mixing up your different keepers so that your intake and your exhaust do not get confused. Again, 101, little basic stuff. 
that folks won't tell you unless you ask questions because they presume you know. All right, so you got this one compressed down. I had to adjust it because I felt like I was really squeezing the snot out of the springs, but I couldn't get the stem out far enough to get mm -hmm. the keepers on. So I'm like, all right, party on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really squish it. But the nice thing is that this thing is levered so that it really doesn't fly out of my hands. Um, again, there's a nicer nomadic version that Proform sells. This one though, so far, hasn't gotten out of hand for me. So I'm pretty happy with it. Let's give it a whack. <laughs> All right, that my friends is a quick and dirty <laughs> valve uh, valve spring installation. We are putting some seriously overkill <laughs> parts on a pretty basic 440 build. This is not. You know, I like Joe from Mopar Joe. Yeah, just Joe's doing Joe's doing the right kind of builds. Yes, he's, he he's like, hey, let's just throw together a very nice low buck build. I'm like putting freaking roller springs and yeah, ro yeah roller he's lifters with stamp and rockers and whole deal on that. Yeah, uh, God bless him for doing what he's doing. <laughs> I like his stuff. He's like, hey man, I'm just he's a good old boy. Yeah. He's just like. Hey man, we're just gonna put together something nice and cheap. You guys can do this on a Saturday. I'm sitting there like, hey, here's six hundred dollars in a set of nine oh six heads, you know, angle cutting everything and <laughs> putting in way too it's just oh god. No port work. So <laughs> Yeah, we're not porting anything. So it's just like yeah. way too much equipment for what it's capable of doing. <laughs> Well, it's, it's kind of like a trailer hitch. I'd rather have too much trailer hitch than, than I'd rather have a class three than a class two. All right, two. I'll give you that. That's the way I look at that. Let's uh, get our, bought a set of the Manly, because it's Manly. Oh, you're so Manly. Oh, it's so Manly. <laughs> Marsh is Manly. Manly Marsh. Huh? It's ma'am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not sure if I did it. Oh, right. no. We're going to get canceled. Oh, boy. Yeah. Iron heads. Oh boy! Gotta love them. Iron freaking heads. Yep. There's my towel. <laughs> Sorry. You missed it. <laughs> oh, oh, you just barely missed it. Come this way. Come this way. It's this way. Where are you? There it is. Bolt. Right. Bolt. There it is. Once you get one, that doesn't come right Okay. Up We're in. Bolt me. Give me something. <laughs> I, don't trust, I don't trust the towels to hold this.
right, my friend. We got heads on. We're gonna soak these. We're gonna let them fill up with oil. So I got some clean, I got a relatively clean VR1. I got one pass on it. Yeah, yeah, we got a couple passes on the dyno with it. So that's decent. We got our undrilled trick flow valve cover. Makes for a good. <laughs> good trough. Yeah, oh yeah. Ooh, listen to that. Mm. The that sound, mean, that's the sound of horsepower right there. Yeah. Roar, 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 roar. yeah. <laughs> so we'll let these soak. We'll let the plungers of the uh, hydraulic lifters start to fill up. You so, see the bubbles. Oh, yeah. Bubbles are. Yeah, you can see the bubbles. They're bubbling. Tiny bubbles. There you go. Yeah. All right. We'll let those guys soak. So we'll put the rockers on the heads. And then by the time we finish that, we'll be able to put the lifters in and then we'll start checking push rod length. And for you guys who are wondering what lifters we are running, we are running the Evolution uh, lifter, uh, roller lifter link bar, roller lifters. Evolution lifters are the one, they're good. The Evolution lifters, yes. They're rebuildable, I mean, they're very HCT, CRB, CRH. Well, Chrysler, yep. Chrysler big, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, Chrysler Hemi, Chrysler big RB, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. High performance Chrysler RB and Chrysler Hemi roller. Hey, all right, I figured that out. Yeah. Okay. All by yourself. I know. I'm. Nobody I'm you. Mod says I'm her special little boy. Valve springs. In case you guys were wondering what our valve springs were, they're 155 pounds at uh, inch 880. Uh, that's the seat load. Open 377 pounds at 1280 uh, inch. Spring rate 370 pounds per inch. Coil bind at 1.230. So we've got our roller rockers. This is the Ultra Pro Mag rocker kit for a big black Chrysler, R B and RB, of course. And already come, well, they come all individually sealed. Oh, Our bubble wrap. Here's, again, more stickers. Stickers! We got more stickers. <laughs> and we'll just put that over there. Chrysler Pro, Pro Magnum Rocker Arm Kit. And note that for big black Chrysler only, you should first separate the left side rocker arms from the right side rocker arms. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Uh, let's see here, uh, here's my X-Acto knife I was looking for, a razor blade. My X-Acto knife is not exact nope. or very sharp. So, nope, not sharp at all. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> yeah, these are not roller, these are bushed. Bush just on your long haul stuff is a better idea. Well, I prefer it because it's less moving parts. Mm -hmm. They are fully adjustable, which is nice. Rollers are bad about galling the shafts over time, just yeah. because they're they're so hard. So we're gonna slide that on, put this on. Let's take a gander yeah, and how we line up. up. They're not big and gaudy looking. You don't have to have a special valve. Well, the nice thing is, is that I got stock valve covers and I want to see if these boys will fit underneath stock valve Those, covers. That should fit. I can see that doesn't look. The biggest part's gonna be the adjusting. Right. So we'll take a look, see if these boys will fit. Cause I think we can get away with being sneaky. And I'm, I'm just snugging it down cause I wanna see first, if we can put a valve cover on there. Second of all, I want to see where these are sitting on the pad, um, and I, uh, I'm curious because I mean they're pretty centered, but I'm also checking different axes. All right, so um, this one is passenger side. Beautiful. Yep. Drops right off. Okay. Now let's see if it hunks into anything. I'll tell you what, I have those thick yeah. valve cover gaskets. Yeah. I uh, start measuring push rod length. So I'm gonna start putting our hydraulic roller lifters in.
just starting to ramp up so this one's lower than that yeah. so in, in case you guys are wondering here on camera what's going on is the actual height of a roller lifter is demonstrably taller than a factory <laughs> flat tappet. Uh, quarter inch maybe. Almost a quarter inch because we're, we're not sitting on the saddle. So they're quite a bit. Right. So they're Yeah, they're taller. Yeah, so we got about a quarter inch more height in the lifter here. Yeah. And what that effectively means is that a stock length push rod simply won't work with these taller lifters. Hey, so unfortunately, project. <laughs> unfortunately, all of my adjustable measuring push rods that I've had were all cup and ball, and this is a rounded ball and ball, even though it doesn't have a big ball on the end. Um, so I can't even use this to measure properly. I mean, well, I don't know. We could just stick it in the, would, would this actually fit in the plunger? Would, I mean. It might get you close. We, I mean, cause we don't really have to order a custom push rod. It, someone's already done the math for us. So if we find something in the ballpark, mm -hmm. And go, oh, okay, that one's off by just, you know, Near ten thousandths yeah. or twenty thousandths. That's going to be the one we order because we have this much adjustment. Yeah, yeah, you want to be halfway between. All right, well, let's, let's just use this one then. All right. All right. Back that dude way down. In fact, the lower the better. That way we can just index it up. How far down can you go? How low can you go? I'm just hitting zero right there. All right, we ze we're zeroed here. Yep. And so no real tension on the plunger, mm -mm. right? No, I just took the clearance out of it. Okay. It still moves. We don't need to rotate the valve or the cam at all, do we? Or would you suggest we do that? I think it's on the base circle right now. Okay. It looks like it's on the bottom of it. Super scientific. <laughs> yeah. Super. Yeah. It's a craftsman measuring tape. It's a, it's a superior craftsman. You know, it's uh, <laughs> just, just over eight and a half inches. Just over eight and a half. Eight and a half, and you've got it's to that a quarter mark past the half. There's a oh the eight. It is in the sixteenths right now. <laughs> it comes to that guy right there. So what does that come out to? Eight and. Uh, well, there's that now. Yeah, there's your half. And then half, two. Eleven sixteenths? Nine sixteenths, there's that five eight. So it's uh, the closest thing to yeah. eleven sixteenths, huh? All right, just finished applying the last little coat of paint. Just trying to get that Chrysler blue looking right. And it is dark outside, don't get me wrong but had to finish it up. Couldn't go to, I couldn't go to bed not knowing that this wasn't finished. So we got it all painted up. It's looking real good. Push rods just showed up in the mail. So I will be having these valve covers off very quickly and getting our push rods in and our rockers in and setting those uh, setting those to the right height and then from there we finish up the rest of the top end and see how quickly we can get this thing on the dyno over at Tommy's. All right we've got our trick flow push rods they are 8.650 inches long 3 8 diameter this is an 8 pack it's for one side our second side we'll be putting in just a second but 
I want to get these guys out of the bag and get them soaking in oil. Just a good thing to uh, get them nice and wet. Get them all coated up. And that way we'll start putting them in and get our rockers assembled and everything start to get measured up. All right, got the valve cover off. Went ahead and oil canned all of the springs and the retainers and the tips. Want to have a nice lubricated surface. We've got our push rods soaking in oil. And we're gonna start putting these boys in. So as you can see, we've already skipped a couple steps. We've jumped ahead. We went and painted our heads, got them mounted on, torqued them down to 75 all the way around, and did it in a circular pattern. We also got all of our push rods oiled, put in, along with all of our lifters that we pre-soaked in oil. We're using VR1 Valvoline oil for all that. We also went and put all of our comp roller rockers on and these are torqued down to 25 so you don't have to go crazy and since we're going into iron we really weren't worried about um, uh, different metals since we were going steel to steel that wasn't a problem either we didn't have to use any graphite for any of the hardware now when it comes to our push rods they are a little short we did pick the 8.650 inch push rods. We probably could have gone to eight and three quarter. I actually am considering buying a second set of eight and three quarter length push rods because I do not like how far out all of our adjusters are. They're really tapped out and I don't like the angle of the ball or the tip of the push rod in that socket. It, uh, it actually is natural, it's not binding. It actually is rolling really smoothly. That's a testament to comp cams. But because of the pressure that is being put on the outside of the adjuster, we are putting a lot of stress on the adjuster rather than keeping the stress deeper inside of the rocker. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust these valves using this current setup, but uh, it's very likely that I'm going to be changing out to eight and three quarter in a little bit. Uh, I just am not comfortable with what we ended up having. So let's talk about valve train adjustment. The nice thing is that there's a lot of ways to skin the same cat and you'll find a lot of different people telling you a lot of different ways. Believe it or not, most of them end up with the same result and so you can kind of take the cheap way or the easy way out on that and we're going to show you. The first way that we know of is what I would call the official way of doing that. What comp cams and a lot of engine builders and what most manuals will tell you is that once you get your number one cylinder at TDC at Top Dead Center, you're gonna to wanna to watch as the exhaust rocker starts to move down. Once the exhaust rocker starts to move down, that means that the intake side has offloaded. 
okay? And that's gonna show you that your push rod is spinning very freely. I can, I can spin this very easily. It's not loose, it's not flopping around, but it is, uh, it is at its least amount of tension. You'll see that my rocker is adjustable top to bottom. Um, we don't have any side to side play because we are shaft mounted and that's the nice thing about a Mopar. Uh, but when it comes to adjusting these, you'll see that this guy has a little bit of play, these have play. But as you go around in your firing order, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna wanna watch the exhaust go down. What, just the minute that it starts, just the very, very second that you see that exhaust lifter start to go down, that means your intake is ready to be lashed. And as you do that, you go through your firing order, okay, you move all the way around, you adjust all of your intakes, and then as you are crank, you know, cranking over the engine, you do all your intakes, and then you do the exact opposite for your exhaust. So the minute that you start to see the intake start to go down, that means your exhaust is ready to be adjusted. That is the recommended, that's the official by the book method, and that works great. And what you're gonna do is that you're going to lash these down. Let's demonstrate how we would lash down number one in this instance. So we have a very loose push rod right here, uh, and we do have some play. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna adjust this until all of the play is, oh, that's a little too much. Let me back off. All right, just a second that I can't twist it is where I wanna stop. Okay, so there's my tension, okay? So then, you see that I'm at the six o'clock, all right, you know, like a face of a clock. What I can do is that I can go up to 12, I'm holding it in place here with my wrench, and I'm gonna bring it down to six o'clock, all right? That is my preload on the lifter. So now that I'm happy where my preload is, I've gone a full 180 degrees. I'm gonna tension, tighten this up, all right? My little lock nut is gonna hold this down and we are in good shape. So that is the by the book way of adjusting your rockers and your valve lash, okay? This works for any hydraulic lifter. It could be a roller lifter, it could be a flat tappet, it really doesn't matter. This process is what is suggested for any hydraulic lifter. But there is a couple different ways, and I do like one way that I caught online. Believe it or not, Derek Berry of uh, <laughs> Vice Grip Garage, he outlined this. I had seen this done before, and believe it or not, it totally, totally works. And it's kind of the lazy man's way of doing it. That's not calling Derek lazy. He made the joke himself. But the way that he suggested is that, quite honestly, you went through and you adjusted every single one that was loose. So let's come, let me, let me go back here. So we've got this one that's loose, all right. So I'm gonna adjust this until it tightens up. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna lash that one down. We got our number five is loose. Number five exhaust is loose. We're gonna tighten it just a hair more. There we go, perfect. Snug that up. Now you notice I'm not doing preload. Notice I'm not doing preload. I'm simply snugging them up, okay? And what's gonna happen is as, okay, a little bit more, perfect. All right. Then, you can go a full 180, you can go by 90 degrees. I prefer to, to rotate the engine in quarters. So that is, my suggestion, you don't have to do that. It really does not matter. But we're gonna rotate this in 90 degrees. Oh, there goes the engine. There we are. Okay, so then we're gonna do another round 
All right, we're a little loose on our number three, our number three intake. So let's loosen that up. There we are, okay. All right, we got a little tight. Okay, beautiful. Snug that up. Now, the way he suggests it is that you go all the way around. I've already lashed this side. This side is already done. Number seven, it's a hair loose. There it is, okay. Tighten that down. So what's gonna happen is that as we go around and just keep snugging up all the push rods, okay? We want them all just snug. We want them tight enough that we can't twist, but just enough that we can't twist. Once we've done that, it doesn't matter where the camshaft is, it doesn't matter where the valve is in its rotation, once we've snugged them all up, go back around and go 180 degrees. And when you do that, you're gonna set your valve lash. It does not matter where it is in the rotation. Now, I've also seen Uncle Tony, you've seen T Tony DeFeo, he's given a similar suggestion, but instead of doing quarters on the crank and cranking it over quarterly, he says, spin it 360 degrees. And spin it 360 degrees. And he's doing it just by the rocker feel. And he's, he's lashing them just by the rocker feel. He's not adjusting them by the push rod twist. See, we got, we got one that we can snug right now. So there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. Um, I'm not saying Tony's wrong or Derek's right or anything like that. I am saying that there are a lot of ways to do this. And if you're not comfortable kind of going by feel, if you're not comfortable taking guesses at it or you know knowing your own engine, then you know what, by all means, go by the manufacturer's suggestion or go by the uh, you know Mopar Performance Engine Builder's book. And you can't go wrong that way. But for the guy who has thrown together enough of these motors, what you can do is just get a really good feel for the preload, get the feel for how the rockers are how the rockers are lined up, and with that you'll be able to adjust all your valves and really have a nice solid preloaded lift hydraulic lifter, and it'll be ready to rock. And the nice thing about hydraulic lifters is that you never have to relash them again. All right, as long as everything is tightened down and you've done a really good job, and you are really secure in what you've done then you really don't have to go back over your work. You'll be in really good shape and you'll never have to pull that valve cover off again. I hope that helps. I'm not a big fan of cork gaskets, never have been, but we're gonna listen to Jim on this one and we're gonna use the cork gasket and see how well they seal up. I feel like they're bunching up and my inner OCD is making me want to put RTV on this but we're gonna see how well they seal up just using the cork gasket and see if Ma Mopar was right in using these guys So as we get closer to buttoning up this engine, we need to get the valley pan on. There's a couple tricks that need to happen when it comes to the valley pan. So thankfully you don't need to go crazy with the RTV, and I know that is saying something for me, especially as I do tend to go crazy with RTV. But really the best places is 
primarily in the corners right here. You want a little dollop in each corner. I do tend to put a little bit of RTV on the gaskets just to keep them in place. I don't go crazy. I just actually smear a little bit on. There's no special place to put it. I'm just putting it on the flat machine surfaces so that these guys can stay in place long enough to get the pan on and tighten everything down and not have them move around and shift. Because as you put the valley pan on, it's gonna shift. And as you put the other gaskets on, it's gonna shift some more. And then you're gonna put your intake manifold on and all of that's gonna move around. It's better just to have a little bit of insurance. All right, here we go. That's tacked up really nice. That looks good. Stripped all the old paint off. Got our new, or got our newly repainted valley pan. We're looking pretty good. So we're gonna put this down. There we go. We're getting a little bit of a squish. That's good. We're adhering. Looks nice. Yeah, the pan is not precision, and that's just. The way it is, Mom Mopar was not precise with this stuff. So you're gonna get a lot of distortion in the pan and you're just gonna have to wrestle with it yeah, a little bit. Not the end of the world, but it can be a chore. I'm not putting down the pan retainers yet. Um, and actually, I need to take two of them as a little bit of a placeholder. I don't put any tension on, I just thread them on a little bit. And the only reason I'm doing that is to keep the pan from walking around. We're using Edelbrock's RPM Performer Dual Plane Manifold. Um, this is a really good street and even strip, but really more of a street manifold. We're gonna place this guy very gingerly okay it's it's still moving the gaskets around pretty good i'm using a bunch of spare arp stuff it's only because i had it it's not because i went out and bought it i had a bucket full of just spare arp stuff uh building the race motor the 535 I go through a lot of hardware, I go through a lot of parts, and that's literally the only reason why I'm using these bolts. They're obviously ARP, they're awesome, but it's super not mandatory at all. You can use factory. Factory hardware will be perfect for this. Uh, I literally just have it. Um, and I haven't cleaned up, I, I'm so lazy, I haven't cleaned up a set of good factory hardware. To use instead of these. And again, I like to do a cross pattern. Alright, so I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go there, and then I'm gonna bring it in and do a cross pattern. Because again, we're trying to get this to lay down evenly and not have any gaps. Okay, so intake manifolds on, we've snugged them all down. Now we gotta torque it down per factory spec, although we're not doing a uh, factory cast iron manifold, we are going to torque it down to the prescribed 40 pounds. So let's just, there we go. All right, we got our intermittent drive. This is what drives the oil pump. Got our light. We're just gonna thread it in nice and easy. Now the reality is we're probably not indexed very good. We get a screwdriver. We're gonna index that in I'm gonna squirt a little bit of oil on the gears first and then verify where I top dead center 
and that we're aligned. And it might take a couple tries to do that. And there we go. Goes in nice. Just rolls in nice and well seated. All right, guys, I had mentioned earlier that we were running the 8.650 push rod, and I was really unhappy with how deep the uh, adjusters were in the rocker. You can see we are negative by several threads, by about three, two to three threads into the lock. I went ahead, I, I wasn't happy with how deep those were, remeasured, knew I needed to go a little bit longer. So I went a hundred thousandths longer and went with an eight and three quarter. Just got these lashed. These are all finished. You can see I've got about a thread. Yeah, I've got about a thread poking up here. The angle is not nearly as extreme as you will see on one of these rockers. See how extreme that angle is of the push rod in the adjuster. That is a quick way to put too much pressure on the outside of the cup. Let's make sure the phone focuses. Here we go, here's the camera focus. You can see all that tension is gonna be pushed right on the edge of that cup. That is a recipe for disaster. That is going to break. So I went ahead and got the longer push rod Let's find a good, good example. Okay, see, we've got the push rod a lot deeper into the cup right here. It's not nearly as extreme. And a lot of that tension is going to be now pushed into the rocker instead of just the cup. In fact, I could do to actually go a little bit longer. I could go with an eight, an eight, 800. I could go with an eight, 850 that gets us into more of a custom length push rod and i think eight and three quarter is going to do us okay again we are not looking at a very aggressive camshaft so this will do this is not nearly as extreme as our angle over here this is just a recipe for disaster that is just going to kill us and we'll just hang on to these push rods we'll put them on the part shelf put them in a plastic bag and oil them up and keep them for later. And hopefully one day we'll use them. Maybe if we do a deck block, but for right now, these guys got to go. That is simply no good. And the next time you see this engine, it'll be over at Tommy's auto machine and parts. The goal is to make 400, maybe 415, 420 horsepower. That'll probably be around 5,200 RPM. And we're pretty certain we're gonna make close to 500 pound-feet of torque. I'm, I'm hoping for 500. I don't have really high expectations, but I do think this should be a nice, good, solid street motor that makes a little bit of a rumpity rump. And we got our Edelbrock VRS double pumper 650. And that's part number 1306. If you guys are interested in getting more information, and looking it up. So guys, thanks again for tuning in and watching the episode all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, maybe leave a comment, share it with your friends, help us grow the channel. Definitely hit the subscribe button. We noticed that over 70% of our viewers haven't hit the subscribe, so if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that button so that you don't miss out on any videos that we publish or any updates that we do put up in the community pages. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, Mopar Connection Magazine is the industry's only daily digital Mopar magazine. And it's entirely subscription free to you. So go ahead and visit us over at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com where we publish new articles every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. We'll see you there.